Chapter 1, Section 2, Forms of Government. When comparing all the governments in the world, you would find one thing in common. Someone is in charge. The question is, who? There are many different forms of government. Some have one leader who has all the control. Others give power to the people. The following are forms of government that exist or have existed around the world. Keep in mind, how do different forms of government affect the citizens that live there? Please use the worksheet I've attached to fill in the notes that I'm going to give today. Let's start with a monarchy. A monarchy is a king or a queen that rules the country. The king or queen is known as the monarch, and monarchs usually come to power through their family line. The current king or queen's oldest child becomes the next king or queen. In some monarchies, especially those in historical times, the monarch held all the power and had the final say over the government. In modern times, however, monarchs usually share the power in other parts of government. Often they are subject to the country's constitution. With a monarch, the power is done in the royal family. It's considered to be inherited power. Now, here's the one thing that you need to understand with monarchies. Most monarchs believe that they were direct descendants of God, and therefore their lineage and their question of lineage comes directly from God, which is why it, their subjects rarely ever questioned what, were they, what they were told. The law and order in a monarch is the king or queen made all the laws, and those subjects had to follow those laws. As you will learn in world history next year, most monarchs gave personal freedoms and liberty to their citizens, but only enough where they could control them entirely. The pros and cons of this, well, it provided stability. There were no elections, and all the decisions were fast and final. And if you were a subject to it, had a problem, you couldn't complain. So again, when you look at the pros and cons, was life good living under a king or a queen? Considering you couldn't advance any more in your class system, you'd be the judge. Current monarchs around the world include those in Oman, Brunei, and Jordan. A constitutional monarch is very similar to a monarchy, with the exception of one thing, the rule. Most rule is done from a parliament or a congress. A parliament is very similar to our own congress, except it's made up of the House of Lords and the House of Commons, whereas our Congress is made up of the House of Representatives and the Senate. In the House of Commons, those are ordinary people. In the House of Lords, those members are elected from nobility. Now, that's very similar to what we had. It wasn't until 1915 that we got to choose our own senators by, through election. Prior to that, the House of Representatives chose our senators for us. In a constitutional monarchy, you will find a king or a queen, but you will also find either a prime minister, a premier, or a chancellor who leads their government. In England's case, they not only have a queen, but they also have a prime minister. Much like here in the United States, there's a great value placed on equality, opportunity, and personal freedom. It's considered that if you put in hard work, that you'll reap success and reward. Now, the pros and cons to this, there are personal freedoms, liberty, and opportunity, and much like our personal freedom, liberty, and opportunity, we derive those directly from England and old English law. However, there's huge economic inequality between the classes, and of course, when you're in this type of government, as you've seen here in the United States, government is slow to get things done. Other than the United Kingdom, your other example would be Bhutan. Our next two forms of government are usually intertwined with one another. There is dictatorship and totalitarianism and fascism. So let's start with a dictatorship. Within a dictatorship, there are no other political parties allowed. And if you studied Adolf Hitler, you understand that his job after World War I was to go around and identify all the different political parties that existed in Germany after World War I. Well, when he came to the Nazi party, he fell in love and he believed in what the message was. Soon he took over and, well, of course, the rest is history. All man, excuse me, all power is given to one man who is usually a military leader in a dictatorship. 
The law and order, um, the party fills all government positions. They enforce one set of laws for the loyal followers and another set for everyone else. And you can think of the SS uh, troops or the Gestapo in, in Germany. And of course, violence is used to uh, maintain the rule in that country. When we talk about liberty and personal freedoms in a dictatorship, most personal freedom is seriously limited. Um, the dictator usually controls all the press, the schools, and the police. They forbid strikes and set the worker salaries. And again, you can't have your country striking all the time or you wouldn't get very far. And that's why the dictators set the salaries, whether the workers are happy or not, and they forbid those strikes. Now, when we talk about um, controlling the schools, everything from what you take, what classes you take, to what you do before and after school are dictated um, by the government. So imagine coming to school every day and being told, no, you cannot play football. No, you cannot be a dancer. Uh, no, you cannot be in the chorus. Uh, no, you cannot be in the band. Uh, you're basically told what you can and cannot do. So our examples for dictatorship would include Adolf Hitler uh, in Nazi Germany, uh, Saddam Hussein in Iraq, uh, Mao Zedong uh, in China, uh, Vietnam, and of course, um, Fidel Castro in uh, Cuba. Now, I had mentioned to you that the totalitarian fascist regimes and dictators usually go hand in hand. And the power in a totalitarian government is usually held by a dictator. Um, they also have a group of government officials who run the country for them. So again, the easiest way to remember this is totalitarian, total. So you have more than one. Total is more than one. And that's how um, I always tell kids to remember that. Now, here it's very similar to the dictator. Uh, party fills all the government positions. They enforce one set of laws for the loyal followers. There's another set for um, everyone else. Uh, violence is used to maintain rule. And of course, there's a secret police. Now, you will find secret police in a lot of other types of government, but those governments rarely acknowledge that they exist. In a totalitarian state, you are told what religion you belong to. The economy is controlled tightly by the government, uh, as is your education. Um, your family, you're told how many children that you are um, regulated in having. And of course, the media is um, it's pro-government, and it can't be anything else. Uh, I, I, you think of the media today and the, and the coverage with uh, quote-unquote fake news that's going on out there and and you, you there's a, some truth to that when you think of these other countries who put out one thing and only one thing um, the pros and cons of this is that there's extreme national pride in a country that's totalitarian we have national pride in the United States, but you need to think about the different times that we have national pride. Fourth of July, we have national pride. Uh, the Olympics, we have national pride. War, we have national pride. But you'd be hard pressed to find any other times in our country's life that we have national pride. There's also a loss of personal freedom. There's no opposing views. And of course, all your activities are controlled by the state. North Korea is a great example of a totalitarian state under Kim Jong-un. And in this situation, uh, he claims that there's no poverty in the country, but yet there's a lack of uh, nutrition throughout the entire country. And the reason we know this is because our country, uh, as well as a lot of other countries, has, have put sanctions on that country, and they can't bring the food in that, that they need. Um, the other person was Mussolini uh, during World War II. Um, shortly after World War I, uh, he created this this. Well, he didn't create, but he was part of the movement for fascism. Our last form of government for today is an oligarchy or aristocracy. And uh, here, a small group of powerful people make most government decisions for their own benefit. Membership in the ruling party can be based on wealth, family, or military power. And I want to note to you that from 1948 to 1994, uh, official policy in South Africa gave white people all the political power. Even though the majority of South Africans were black, non-whites could not influence government. White South Africans elected representatives to sit in a lawmaking um, body. And most laws are slanted for the corrupt or the selfish purposes. So mentioning that, uh, the liberty and personal freedoms of the people are decided by the ruling party. And um, 
the power can go to the best individuals. And if you don't belong to the right religion, if you don't speak the right language, you're out. And the state, the poor will stay poor and the rich get wealthier. Most oligarchies rely on uh, public obedience um, or even to the fact that they'll use some sort of physical punishment to keep you in line. And one of the issues ha with having oppression and, and public obedience is that you can't necessarily go to war because these, this small group that rules the country, they're afraid that if they give weapons to the masses that they'll revolt and retaliate against their punishments that they have. So everything's tightly controlled in an oligarchy and an aristocracy. So other than South Africa uh, up until um, 1994, your other examples are uh, ancient Greece and Sparta. At this point, because you had to stop and start the video so much and take your notes, we'll stop for today. We'll finish part two of this series tomorrow.